All right, 548 tips that you might not have already known. Let's get into it. All right, starting with multiple interface policies. So as you can see here by default, only I can specify um, one incoming interface and one outgoing interface. If I try and change anything or add you know, VLAN 1005, as you can see, it just overwrites it, right? So to change that, we'll go to system, feature visibility, and multiple interface policies. Make sure that that's checked. And then let's go back to the policy that we were just configuring. And right there, we can see that now we have the option to add multiple uh, incoming or outgoing interfaces uh, so that we don't have to duplicate our policy configuration. All right, next up, policy lookup. So let's say we have a bunch of firewall policies and we want to know, uh, we want to simulate which policy would traffic be matching uh, if we had active traffic running through the firewall right now. So we can do that with a quick test using policy lookup. So let's say traffic is arriving on the internal interface, which is um, 192.168.112, that network. And then the protocol would be TCP. The source IP, let's just put in a random IP here that's on the internal interface, you know, the dot 20. Uh, we don't need a source port, that, that would just be random. You know, 4.2.2.2 would be our destination, and then the port would be 443. So if traffic were to match this criteria, which uh, firewall policy would we be hitting? In that case, it would be this one that says internet all. So just kind of cool tool there to show us a simulation. All right, and now, how do we see what commands the GUI might be running? So if we go to the CLI and we go diag debug CLI uh, 6, and then we'll go diag debug enable. Okay, so nothing's happening right now. But now let's go into the GUI. And, um, you know, I just went to the, the dashboard and went to DHCP. Uh, just to show an example, if I right click this and go, okay, create a DHCP reservation, maybe I want to see actually what's happening on the back end or on the CLI so that I can replicate this on a larger scale via script, for example, right? So if I go create DHCP reservation, uh, and then we'll just go test reservation for the name. Uh, okay, so I've created that DHCP reservation now. And there we go, we actually see in the CLI what what commands in the CLI actually had to be run for, for that GUI action to take place. All right, and now reference checking. This one might be a little bit more well-known, but I think it's really valuable nonetheless. So, you know, let's say we're, we're trying to delete, uh, you know, an IPsec tunnel, for example, right? We don't have that option. Uh, you know, usually the reason why is that this IPsec tunnel for this example is being associated to something else, and that needs to be removed before we can actually get this delete option. So for example, right? Here we can actually go to the far right, click the references column here. And if you don't have it, right click the column and make sure that REF dot is, is specified, right? So once I click the references available, I can see that there's a phase two configuration as well as a firewall policy that's kind of locking me from being able to remove this, uh, this IPsec tunnel. So, you know, easily what I can do is just remove these two references um, that are kind of holding on to this config here remove that, you know, refresh this page. And there we go. Now I can actually delete it because all references have been removed so that I can delete this IPsec tunnel configuration. All right. And last but not least here, uh, you know, finding search terms via the CLI. So let's say that we have an IP pool and it's named test underscore IP underscore pool here, right? So if I want to find this equivalent value, but in the CLI, I could just right click it and go edit in CLI. That's a pretty good tool to use, but depending on your firmware version, maybe you don't have that. Um, also, you can get a little bit more by considering this. If you were to, let's take that, that search term, right? Test IP pool. Uh, let's pop it into the CLI. If I go show full and then pipe grep, and then I'll put in between two quotes that value, right? We'll just give it a second to kind of run through the whole configuration to find that keyword. All right, there we have it. So we can see that, okay, there is a value. We're seeing the word edit test IP pool and then set pool name. It looks like it's this is used in the configuration, but we need to associate that with more commands and sub commands. So what I can do is I'll just push up here and then type dash F. And it's gonna show me everywhere in the configuration where this uh, keyword is used, test underscore IP pools, and the sub commands and commands associated with it. So we'll give it a moment to do that now. Okay, there we have it. So, you know, now we can actually see that there's two instances where that 
lettering is used or where that wording is used. One is the actual IP pool itself. Uh, and then two is the, the firewall policy that the IP pool is configured. And there we go. We actually see that keyword being specified there. So if you don't want to see as much stuff as I just showed right now, because we, we use the show full command, you can actually just go remove that full and just go show. And then it should show a, a bit more of a compressed version of what, what I just showed a minute ago. There we go. There we have it. So that's a little bit more of a condensed version. Okay, so I hope that helped. And uh, thanks for tuning into this video. We'll see you in the next one.